Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Miss Teacups and welcome back to Oxford United Changing for the Premier League. So last episode we had a decent episode, we've had some really good results without Neil lately which is surprising, you know, I thought we'd absolutely get banged without Neil, our star player, but we've been doing well and at the end of the last episode I said, oh the transfer window is coming soon, I didn't realise how soon it was, I think next episode, the next day was the transfer window, we're now in the transfer window which is fucking fantastic. We can now buy players. I said to myself, I'll only buy three players to improve my team. So you're probably wondering who I looked at. I looked at the usuals, Bakali. They were like 15 mil or something for Bakali. I was like, nope. <laughs> looked at Fisher from Ajax. He's got an amazing potential, same as Bruma from Sport and CP. I think I might get Bruma. Also looked at Luke Shaw from Southampton. I do love me some Luke Shaw. He really progresses far in this game. He's one of the better left backs. He gets over 90 pace, which is fucking fantastic. I was looking at Carrera for a centre attack in mid because uh, he's got some amazing pace. Like this kick can get up to 98 pace. He's really something special. Looked at a few other players, but for now I've just put some offers and some inquiries in yet. We won't find out who I actually buy until a little later on. But trust me now, I've already bought the players. They're really good, but I'm not going to spoil it yet. So if all transfer news aside, let's get into the first game of the day. Oxford United at home to Rotherham United, and this is how it went. So Rotherham, good team. I actually watched them on the TV the other night because there was no other football on. It was pretty fun to watch. Don't really know a lot about them, don't really know that much about their team. But this was a really difficult game. Rotherham were playing some decent football. Not gonna lie, they had a lot of the better opportunities. They had a lot of the better opportunities, but they didn't take any of them. And this first half was really dull. I don't think in this first half I had more than two shots. I don't even know how many shots I had off the top of my head right now, but it wasn't a lot. I really was on the back foot a lot of the time, which was pretty frustrating. They were just outplaying me, and they got their reward. I thought I'd held out to half time, but there was five extra minutes of stoppage time, and they were just piling on the pressure from me. And yet again, it was just some piss ball defending. I didn't clear a ball properly. Finds his way to one of their midfielders. He plays a fruit over, takes a little bit of deflection from one of my players. It's actually a pretty decent chip through ball from one of my players. Goes to their striker, his name's like Hilton. Puts in the back in net. Can't really complain about that, that was my fault. But I thought I'd held out to half time, looks like I haven't. This game is all to play for in the second half. So I'm not going to lie, in the second half I had a different mentality. I was like, you know what, we got to go out for this. We've got to go 100% attacking, that's all we can really do. And just try and salvage a point out of this game. But all credit to Rotherham, they were holding me off very well. Whenever I was attacking, they were just getting a last ditch tackle and they were just winning the ball, which was getting so annoying. But, you know, once you keep piling on the pressure like they did in the first half, you do get your rewards. And around about the 77th minute, we win a corner, whips it in, goes nowhere, comes out to my midfielders. Struna pays a pass to Danny Rose, striker Danny Rose, and he thumps this in the back in it. This is probably about. This is from outside the box. It's a beautiful shot, right? He puts so much power into this shot. He actually gets injured taking the shot. Look at his celebration. He's put, he's, you know, he's holding his hamstring. Deadly shot, beautiful finish in the back of net. I just hope his injury isn't too severe. When that goal went in, I thought, you know what? We might be able to go on and win this game. Rotherham were looking pretty leaky at the back. From then on, I was playing some really teasing balls over the constable. He just couldn't apply the finish to it. But this game ended 1-1. Decent game, you know, going from 1-0 down and getting that beautiful goal from Danny Rose. That was a beautiful goal, I'm not going to lie. Outside the box, decent finish. Can't believe he got injured in the process. But I'll take it, first point of the day. So after that game, Carrera, his team, not going to pronounce his team's name, I think it's San Lorenzo. They accepted his contract, well they accepted the offer for him and I'm now going to offer him a contract. He's going to want some big boy money. Well actually no, he's wanting around about I think 8k a week which isn't too bad for a 4 year contract. For you know, some huge potential that he has, that is very worth it. He looks to be our first signing. I made some improved offers for some other players but we could have him in quite soon which is good. But we're not going to have him in time for the next match. And the next match is Oxford United away to the mighty O's late in Orient. And this is how it went. So at the end of the last game, I actually had a training injury to Rig. I think he's out for something like six weeks, which is kind of annoying because Rig is one of our star players. He's a very good midfielder. He's good on the wing, got pace, can, put, can supply a through ball, can shoot. He's going to be dearly missed. So I had to put in one of my, I think I put in one of my youth players. I think it was that Japanese kid I signed a little while ago. So he's now in the team. But this game was very good. It's snowing. I think this is actually our second game in the snow. I think we had our first game the other episode. So we're getting snow coming up a little bit right now, which is nice. But we got off to an amazing start in this game. So around about the seventh or sixth minute, there's some beautiful play for me. So Potter plays a teasing ball forward to Constable. He makes a darting run like the incredible Hulk is. He gets taken down in the box. A penalty is awarded. And I thought, you know what, for shits and giggles, I'm going to give the penalty to the new kid, the new Japanese kid. I'm not going to pronounce his name. Mitsuya or something like that. 
and he put it in the back of the net. He's got his first goal for the club. It's 1-0. So it's nice to strike early on because once you get that first goal, it's so crucial. Usually once you get a goal like that early on, you can just rate the other team. And in the 13th minute, we get another goal. This is all thanks to Tyrone. So the defenders, he's got the ball. He's not under much pressure. But that Tyrone just darts at the defender. Defender screws up. He wins the ball to the defender. His pace just takes him away. He runs it to the line. Whips in across to Davis. Davis gets a solid header on the ball and puts it in the back in there. That's a beautiful goal. Two players really stood out there. That beautiful movement with Tyrone with the ball was great. That cross was sublime, actually. And that header from Davis was really good. It's 2-0. So we've already got a 2-0 lead. What could get better? A 3-0 lead. So in the 37th minute, we're on the counter-attack. We play a ball. It's a pretty dead ball. Goes to Tyrone. He doesn't get a header on it. I think he does, actually. No, actually, the defender gets a header on it. Constable goes and tackles the defender because he's an absolute monster. He's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Slots in the back of the net. Cool, calm, clear to finish from him. Not going to lie, probably striker Danny Rose might have finished there, but Constable has the finish to put those in the back of the net. It's 3-0. So after that goal winning, I thought, you know what? I got a commanding lead, and I kind of took my foot off the gas a little bit. And I kind of played the price for that. So in the 41st minute, there's some piss poor defending for me. I don't know how I don't tackle this player, but he somehow manages to run in on goal. Plays a sweaty through ball across the bat. Puts it in the back of the net. Can't really complain about that. That was my fault. But it's 3-1. So after that goal with him, half time came and went. This game's all to play for in the second half. Not really. I think we might have already won this game. But let's see how things go. So what can I say about the second half? We just kept up the pressure from the first half. We were just hounding that defence. They were literally not getting a chance on the ball. The second they had the ball, we were just running two man at the defence. We're about the 53rd minute, we're just hounding the defence. Just looking for something out of nothing like we've had with the other goals. Potter wins it off one of the defenders, plays a cheeky through ball over the Tyrone. And I thought I had thumped this right. I accidentally pressed chip and shoot and I thought, you know what, he's going to blast this over. But somehow, he sneaks this in the back of the net and I thought, you know what? Just sexy finish. <laughs> look at the replay. Just look here. I don't even know how he gets the contact on this ball and puts it in that little tight angle. Decent goal. 4-1. What's better than 4-1 though? 5-1. We're about the 58th minute. We have a beautiful counter-attack. Near enough for my whole my midfield and near enough the whole my strike force involved in this move. So Ruffles collects the ball. It's cleared by one of the defenders. Mitsuya, or however you pronounce his name, picks the ball up, plays a cheeky little free ball across to Davis. He puts it in the back of the net. It was such a fast counter-attack for us that they literally could, just could not handle it. It's 5-1. So I think 5-1, this game might a little be done and dusted. Not gonna lie, 5-1's a pretty decent lead. But all credit to Leighton Orient though, they didn't give up the attack. And around about the 51st minute, they just tore apart my defence. I don't know how I didn't tackle back. But yet again, he plays a sweaty free ball across goal. They put it in the back of the net. It's 5-2, but I think it's safe to say this game ended there. It ended 5-2, decent victory from the lads. Picked up five decent goals, well not five decent goals, but we picked up five goals. It's a good win for once. Three points we desperately needed to attack that first place spot, or at least tag automatic promotion. But it's three points in the right direction. After the game, Southampton accepted my bid for Luke Shaw. We're offering him a contract right now. Carrero rejected my contract. He just wants a little bit more money. And we can supply him with the money at the moment because we've got some money in the bank. I think I'll double his wages and see what he says to that. Made some improved offers. Looks like we're not going to have any players in time for this episode. But it's time for the third and final game of the day. Oxford United away to Chesterfield in the FA Cup. So Chesterfield, been a while since we played these bad boys. I was expecting a really decent game. And we did get a really decent game from them. From the get-go, it wasn't like the last game where we won a penalty early on, which hugely just warped how the game turned out. Once we got that penalty last game, it was 100% as simple as that. But this game, both teams had opportunities early on. Beautiful weather outside, so I can't complain about the weather. But, but it was a 50-50 game. But one side did take the lead in the 20th minute. This is actually something so out of nothing. So Davis runs at the ball. He tries to play a through ball to Mitsuo. That's how I'm just going to pronounce his name. He doesn't get to it. Defender tries to clear it. Flumps the clearance. One of the worst clearances I've ever seen. Davis picks up the ball and puts it in the back of the net. It's 1-0. So for the first half, that was literally like my only shot on goal. But I made it count. Oh boy, did I make it count. Because Chesterfield were just throwing shots at me this whole half. I was surprised the game didn't you know, turn out to be 1-1. We managed to get into those changing rooms at 1-0. It's all the player from the second half. So for the second half, we had a different mentality. We were just going for attack football. That's what I felt like. I thought, you know what? Attack is the best form of defence, and that's all we can do right now. We just need to hold on to this lead. 
and we get a beautiful counter-attack. So remember the 56 minutes, strewn in my left back, he just darts at their defence. Oh my god, he wins the ball of one of the defenders, he uses his pace, he just darts right at goal, plays a cheeky free ball to Mitsua, however you're going to pronounce it, and he has, oh my god, even though he's really badly rated, he manipulates this ball so well. Takes it from his right, puts it over to his left, some messy shit right there, and bangs it in the back of the net. It's 2 0. After that goal winner, I was like, thank God we got the 2 0 lead. <laughs> we can't let this go. But in the semi third minute, Chesterfield win a corner, whips it in, goes in the back of the net, headers are OP, amazing finish from the header. It's 2 1. But I'm glad to say after that goal went in, I kind of went 100% defensive and thought, fuck it, I'm not attacking anymore. I can't allow any more attack counter attacks to be attacking my defense. So uh, I kind of sucked it up a little bit and just played out for the 2 1 win. And we got it. 2 1 win. We go forward in the FA Cup. This episode, yet again, our form has hugely changed. A draw and two victories. This is what we're getting right now. This is the form we need to be just challenging for those promotion spots. But hopefully, next episode, we might see some new signees. Hopefully, if the contracts get accepted and, you know, transfer offers get accepted. So, hopefully, next episode, we might see some fresh new faces. So, I hope you join me then. I've been Mr. Teacups. So we break them. Subscribe. See you next time.